it sounds like the PA model really works in radiation oncology. It'd be great to introduce them in rad onc uh, departments across the country. So if there is a chief of staff or a hospital that's thinking about adding a PA to radiation oncology, what are some of the steps they should go through or things they want to think about before uh, adding a PA? Uh, one thing that we did and I would urge others to do is to look at what their numbers are because numbers do talk a lot. Um, we basically uh, were able to show with our first study that introducing a PA to an academic center, which is very busy as is, not just from a clinical point of view, but also from a research point of view, if you can hire a PA or two in that setting, they can um, help significantly in a clinical aspect and the quality of care that the patients receive is identical to what the residents, fellows, or staff would provide. And a lot more time can be freed up for research, teaching, um, and other activities that the Red Onks um, want to participate in. So if there are busy academic centers, or busy non-academic centers as well, um, if they have the numbers to show that an addition of a PA will help them see extra new consults per year, um, or help them uh, help them cut down their wait times, I think that's the first thing to look at. And I know that funding is a big concern. Um, I remember you did a talk at Kappa, four years, four different yeah. methods of funding. So can you sort of walk us through what that looked like year by year for you? So the first year I started off, like I said, I was part of the HFO funding. The plan was HFO was going to provide 50% of my salary, 25% of it was going to come from my department, which is uh, all of the physicians, um, they have a pot. Uh, that's how I like to think of it. And the pot pays for their salaries, and that pot would have paid 25% of my salary. And 25% was coming from UHN. Um, starting second year, the plan was 25%, uh, 50 percent of my salary was going to come from the department and 50% from UHN. But we had a change in our administration, um, and as part of budgeting, they had they removed all of PA funding. So what that meant was um, my department's goal to hire two PAs had to be put on hold because now they had to use the same money to pay one PA, which is what they did for the second year. Um, and then in the interim, we were able to uh, do our application for the Ontario Oncology Association. So Ontario Oncology Association um, helps different radiation oncology or other oncology departments hire um, additional staff in form of either uh, GPOs, which are uh, GPs in oncology training, or uh, clinical specialists or internists um, who can help with the oncology workload. So we used that process to apply for my position, which is a PA's position, and it was approved. Um, and now we've finally gone on to me being a permanent part of the department, and I am being funded through the pot, as we call it, the PM, the partnership, um, which is where all of the radiation oncologists put their billing and they all have set salary and I am paid through the same salary because I technically indirectly uh, help the pot, but I don't obviously do any of my own billings. So what difference has the service or department noticed since adding a PA and having that consistent face there for for years now? So uh, what, they've, no, what they've told me and the kind of feedback I've had is, uh, like I mentioned before, it's nice to be able to have one person who can pretty much cover any site group. Um, for example, the week of uh, Christmas, uh, a lot of the staff members are away and we could get urgent consults from anywhere or we could have patients who drop in. Um, and sometimes it's difficult if you can't find a covering physician or a covering resident. But if you have a PA who can go attend to any of the patients for any of the staff, it really makes the process a lot easier. Um, for example, on Remembrance Day weekend, on Monday, it was a stat holiday technically, so our clinics were cancelled, but we did have a patient who I had never met before, but she had um, a really bad bleeding, fungating mass, and she needed attention sooner rather than later. She could have either gone to emerge and had to wait a lot, long time, but because I was able to attend to her and just update the physician about what my plan of action was um, and allow the physician to take over the care next day, it just makes the transition a lot smoother, both for the patients, for the physicians in charge, um, and I hope that it, you know, it's reducing the load that we have to put on our eMERGE departments and our inpatient beds. Excellent. And are those numbers that you're tracking um, or doing research into? Yes, so we did for the first year I was there collect a lot of uh, that data. We're uh, keeping track of uh, those numbers still, but what we really noticed was a reduction in two full-time staff physicians 
was uh, we were able to compensate for that reduction by hiring a PA because we, I was able to see the same number of new patients that a staff would see. For example, there is two um, radiation oncologists who treat endocrine malignancies, so both pituitary and uh, thyroid cancers. When I was introduced to the practice, I was seeing one-third of the patients. I was contributing just as much as a staff physician in terms of the number of patient, new patients and follow-up patients I was seeing, which made it uh, financially feasible to keep me around as well as improve our access to care. One huge thing we noticed was um, we only have one endocrine clinic per week, and like I said, there's only two physicians who are in charge of it, and we cover a pretty big uh, catchment area. So our wait times at one point were up to two to three months and although thyroid cancer um, tends to be slow growing and it is safe to do so uh, to wait that much and pituitary tumors tend to be benign more often than not. When I was introduced um, we were able to see a lot more consults, a lot more follow-up patients and organize their treatment. Um, our wait times are now down to about three weeks. So. Um, the multiple side groups have had that opportunity and that's why they'll put me in a side group where there's either a lack of a staff physician or there is uh, more consoles than anticipated for that time frame. Mm -hmm. And I think there's this